Metro Exodus. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words the words of the developer. A quarter century after nuclear war devastated the earth, a few thousand survivors still cling to existence beneath the ruins of Moscow in the tunnels of the Metro. They have struggled against the poisonous elements, fought mutated beasts and paranormal horrors and suffered the flames of civil war. But now, Artyom, you must flee the metro and lead a band of Spartan rangers on an incredible continent-spanning journey across post-apocalyptic Russia in search of a new life in the East. First up, let's have a look at the graphics and the sound. Um, there's the graphics um, and here's the sound. Joking aside, there's not really a lot to say about the, 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 the graphics. Um, it, you're looking at the max settings there. Everything on absolute max top quality. That That's what it looks like. Now, I was getting 40 to 50 frames a second on this, so I turned it down. And then the vast majority of the footage you're going to see is lower res graphics than this because I wanted it up to 60 uh, frames a second. Because it, for me, it didn't look... It, different enough there's not a huge amount of graphic details in this uh, graphic setting certainly not what you would expect for a 50 pound game there, there could have been more uh, sound it sounds great it really does it's got minimalistic music which really helps with the atmosphere uh, it's got really good gun sounds excellent monster sounds i mean really scary monster sounds sets up the atmosphere fantastic uh, no problems at all with the sound that the echoes come in at the right time. It's all, I mean, unless you're going to be a nitpicking arsehole. I mean, it's its really, for, for your gamer, it's great. It works. It's fantastic. It doesn't overpower the game. It doesn't detract from the main story and what you're doing. It's just really well done. Customization of your keys is a huge problem. A huge problem with this game. If you are left-handed or you don't use Wasad, you're in for a horrific ride right through this game. In fact, it becomes unplayable. Be and the reason is, is because it is so lazily done by the developers. It's a console port from hell, guys. It runs great. Just because you say console port, everybody immediately thinks, oh, that means it doesn't run very well. Um, but everything else about the customization, the keys is in, in a clunky game, uh, is, is a really, it's a really bad, poor, lazy console port, this game. For example, when you rebind your keys in the options, it won't let you rebind half of your keys even though they are rebound but it says they're not but when you go to use them in game there are they are there unless of course that means sealing your gas mask because it tells you oh press k to seal your gas mask and when you press it it just doesn't and that's because you have to press g press u to clean your weapons mac i'm pressing it that's not cleaning the weapons <laughs> yeah because you have to press f but, you, but you're telling me to press fucking u yeah we are aren't we <laughs> <laughs> lol anyway let's get on with the actual gameplay what's the gameplay like well it's set obviously in post-apocalyptic russia you are with a group of spartan rangers and you are heading I'm, i won't spoil the story but you're you're heading out of moscow uh looking for the promised land that's the kind of what it says in the in the description so there's a few of you going out there and uh, it's really really atmospheric the story is great i was hooked in the story i wanted to know what happened at the end I was a bit disappointed with the end. There's a couple of different endings, I must say. Um, depending on how much of a bastard you are <laughs> as you play the game, there's a good ending and a bad ending. I got the good ending because I'm a nice guy. So the train leaves Moscow and it heads to different areas of Russia. And each area is represented by a season. So you have four seasons and four different big open areas that you have to go to. And I have to say, guys, I didn't like the first area. I loved the second and the third area, and I hated the last area. That's how the game was for me. I think the game ran out of steam uh, in the last two or three hours. It took us about 17 hours to complete, just taking me time. <clears throat> the middle two sections are really fun, especially the uh, forest section uh, where you got your, your crossbow, uh, sorry, your bow and arrow. I love that area. I really love that area. It looked great as well. But I like the desert area as well. I mean, there's some really good areas and there's some really good monsters out there as well. Some fantastic monsters and also some really shit monsters. I think the thing I liked the best about it was the immersion. 
the immersion of actually leaving your train when your train stops you have your, your brake camp um, where the train stops and then you have this open map and you can go anywhere you like on that open map it's not huge but it's, it is open and it's up to you where you go you will be told that you have to go to a certain place to do a certain mission but you don't have to do that you can go somewhere else and the map is inhabited by all kinds of people and monsters and as you use your weapons they get dirty and when they get dirty they get jammed and you use ammo obviously you're going to use your resources while you're out there so you have to scavenge like shit to get a shit ton of new resources and you bring a lot of them back to the camp where you can clean your weapons to get them working again but you can also craft all the ammunition when you get back to your camp because your camp has a workbench sometimes you will find workbenches out in the world where you can do all of them things there but you will also get new weapons when you come back to your camp as well because you have a guy who is making new weapons and they'll come up and say oh hey we've got this new gun here do you want to try it out blah 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 now if you don't have a workbench and you're out in the field you can craft rudimentary stuff such as filters to breathe through your gas mask you can uh, craft uh, first aid kits you can craft some certain throwables and you can craft the ball bearing weapons for a gun which is fucking awesome it's like the real gun it, you have to pump it up <laughs> and it's it's just so great it's it, it's shit at first it feels like a bb gun but as you get more and more attachments for it and i'll go into the attachments now when you come up to an enemy and you kill them or you disable them they drop their gun you have the option to either swap weapons with them or you can dismantle their weapon and if there's anything on that weapon that you don't have like it could be a sight a stock a barrel there's loads of different ways to customize your weapons um it'll highlight in uh, a a different color like a darker color and then when you um, dismantle that weapon you get them add-ons for yourself and you can then apply them to your weapon and you can change your weapon you can change everything about your weapon it's f***ing great it's so deep the weapon customization in this and you have to do that i mean you can make it less powerful but with longer range and better accuracy so if you're going into a situation where you need a longer range you can just change your weapon around completely and, or you can turn it into a, just a, an assault rifle if you want. You know, you can do anything with it. You can put night sights on it. You can put laser dot sights on it. You can put four, six times scope on it. You can change, you get three slots for your weapons. You've got like a pistol, which I tend to keep silenced a lot. I, I use that as my silenced weapon. Uh, you have the the real gun and you have the, um, what well, I had an assault rifle. But I swapped out the, the real gun for a crossbow uh, for a little bit in the game. And I love that. I love the bone arrow. You can put explosive arrowheads on that. There's a shit ton of stuff. You can also... Um, fix your gas mask which you'll need to put on in certain areas where there's gas you get a warning there's gas gas you know so put your your gas mask on and then you'll have a filter which counts down and you can see it on your watch how much length you how, how long your filter's got left and when your filter's used up you have to replace that with a new filter now you craft the filters and if you run out of filters you're dead unless you can get out of a gas area so the whole survival um part of the game is fantastic one of the best i've ever played to be honest with you so deep so immersive it just really sets the scene and makes you feel that you're in there but then of course the game pulls you out with these ridiculous fucking cutscenes. everything you can't even bend over to go under a fucking log unless you hold down the e key what the fuck? It's a log, I can crouch. Why can't I crouch under the fucking thing? No, you've got to hold the E key, Mac, while a little fucking circle goes round. Then you get a little animation view going uh, under the fucking log. Oh, they've got to get between two narrow walls. Well, turn fucking sideways. No, press and hold the fucking E key. Oh, but I don't want to press and hold the E key because that's shit. And then I'm not doing it, I'm out. Something else is doing it. Hey, there's a hole in the wall there, Mac. Do you want to crawl through it? Yes. Don't tell me. Hold down the an a key yes exactly well you've just gotta i'm sorry it's it just constantly it's like having a race in a car and then all of a sudden you have to press the brake pedal for three seconds and stop then you press the accelerator and you're away again oh you gotta stop again stop and then go it just totally ruins immersion when you have to do that because it just stops the whole pace the pace of the game just gets ruined absolutely ruined through holding down the mother E key. And when I talk about things being ruined, all the best things that happen in this game, the best action scenes, the best setups are all ruined because you will not get to do a single motherfucking one of them.
there's a bit where there's this train coming past that you've, you're sabotaging the train and your train's steaming up to come alongside and I'm thinking oh this is going to be awesome I'm going to dive across them and I know you're not Mac you're not going to do a thing you're going to sit there you're going to hold down the fucking E key and then you might as well sit back and light up a fucking smoke I don't smoke but if I did it put me feet on the fucking bench and watch my guy leap across here do this fight that kick this monster off a cliff, smack a bear in the face, escape from them guys, leap off a tower, fall off there. He's going to do it all for you. It's a cutscene. Everything that's exciting in this game is a f***ing cutscene. You will do none of it. You, do you know, I was just talking about this in my last review on Far Cry. That is a game that allows you to do all these things. You feel the badass. In this game, you don't ever feel like a badass because every f***ing opportunity you have to feel like a badass, the game says, hey, f*** you. You can't do this. We're doing this. You just watch. You just watch what you could do if this wasn't such a f***ing awful console port. Artyom, let's jump! <laughs> Well, that's a job well done, huh? <laughs> Speaking of the E key, every time something attacks you, spam the E key, spam the e Do you know what? One of the closing scenes in this game, and in fact, I think it is the last big scene in this game. Do you know what you do? You spam the f***ing E key. You're not dodging, you're not running around, you're not fighting it, you're not using your brain, you're spamming one f***ing key. While I'm going through some of the bad stuff in this game, can I just mention the AI? Now I've played this on easy and I've played it on hardcore and there's not a massive difference other than the usual stuff like your health goes down faster and they're a little bit harder to kill although I didn't really notice much on killing them. It does change it a little bit but the AI is tragic in this game. It's f***ing awful. When you come into like a base where it's full of enemy, the AI is bad. I'll also... I mean, you can't shoot your bow and arrow through gaps in a fence, like big gaps in a fence. I mean, look at this footage here. I'm trying to kill these guys. You can see clearly that I'm aiming between the gaps. You just can't do it. And that's because you're not supposed to do that, are you, Mac? No, you're supposed to be going a little bit further back, climb a rope ladder, get into a treehouse and shoot them from there. That's what the game wants you to do. It wants you to zip line into the base. And I just wanted to take a few out through the fence, but you can't do that. But coming back to the AI, the AI is a bit shit. They can't see you. They can't see you. They do see you a little bit better on hardcore, but um, a lot of the time you, you'll find yourself sneaking around a base as well. And as long, it's <laughs> it's it's quite comical because all you do is switch the light. You just press E again. E. You press E and switch the light off and then as soon as you do that, everybody loses their eyes. They can't see shit. Even though you can see them as plain as on the nose on your face, they can't see you. They can't see anything. And you can crawl up to them and they all conveniently have their backs to you if you're going around the levels the proper way. It's easy. Absolutely piss easy. It's embarrassingly easy. You can take out a whole base. I got so bored with it that I deliberately made a noise and started shooting people just so I didn't die of boredom. Because it, it is just ridiculous. The AI could have been a lot better, but the gunplay is still good. It's such a shame, guys, because this has a fantastic story. It has a really good story. It has good characters. The voicing's a bit sometimes, mind. Uh, most of the voiceovers is good, but now and then it just isn't. Uh, the, the levels is great, uh, the monsters, there's all kinds of monsters, some of them are just hiding on walls and you just see them at the last second, it's really, really atmospheric as, you, as you're walking around, it keeps you on your toes and I love the slow pace of the game, I mean I hate the fact that it becomes a stopped pace when you have to hold the E key but, but overall the, the pace is really nice, it's a slow kind of game and it makes a change to running gun shooters uh, this is it's a nice slow pace and it's got really good story like i said and some really good levels some excellent gunplay the gunplay is, is and this is the annoying thing the gunplay is so good it doesn't need to hold your hand with these cutscenes all the time and you know it's just sad because it's got all the ingredients to be an absolute classical brilliant game this you know, the fact that you have to keep coming back to base to clean your weapons, get more crafting done, and then going back out. You feel like you're, you're living in that post-apocalyptic world. And I love the game. It's really good, and I'm thumbing it up. But my goodness, they have dropped a bollock with the key binding, the clunkiness, the hold, the f***ing E, and the spam, the f***ing E, and the f***ing...
fucking cutscenes that take away all the chances that you have to feel really great in a game. That means it, it's not a brilliant game, it's just a good game, that's all. So there you go guys, that's what I thought of Metro.